typical lumbar vertebra. This is the anterior part of the vertebra, whereas the vertebral arc comprises the posterior part of the vertebra. On the anterior side, we have a vertebral body. The vertebral body is quite large from side to side than from before and backwards. The body has a greater height anteriorly than the posterior surface of the body and this is the reason for the convexity of the spine in the lumbar region. Posterior to the body is the vertebral foramen. The vertebral foramen is triangular in shape and is larger than the vertebral foramen of the thoracic vertebra but smaller than that of the cervical region. Posterior to the body and from the upper borders arise the pedicles of the vertebra. They are quite strong and are directed a bit upwards. This is the reason that the lumbar vertebra they have <coughs> a deep inferior vertebral notch. This is the inferior view of the lumbar vertebra and this is the superior view. We can clearly see the superior vertebral notch is quite shallow whereas the inferior vertebral notch it is quite deep. Posterior to the pedicles arise the laminae. These are laminae. They have minimal overlapping over each other. They meet medially and complete the vertebral foramen posteriorly. Posterior to the junction of the laminae arises the spinous process of the vertebra. The spinous process is quite thick and long. It also forms the quadrilateral plate of the vertebra and it does not go much inferior as compared to the vertebra of the other regions of the vertebral column. The spinous process it is thickened on the posterior and inferior surfaces. From the junction of pedicles and the lamina arise the transverse process. The transverse process they are quite thin and are directed backwards and laterally. On the posterior inferior surface, this is the posterior surface of the transverse process. This is the anterior surface of the transverse process. So on the posterior inferior surface, once again, on the Posterior inferior surface, we can see an elevation. This elevation it marks the accessory process on the transverse process. On the posterior inferior surface, we can see an accessory process. This accessory process it marks the sign of a true transverse process. The accessory process it marks the sign. The true transverse process. The superior articular processes that also develop from the junction of pedicle and laminae, they are quite farther away than the inferior articular processes. These are the inferior articular process and they are the superior articular process. Each process it bears a concave facet. This is a concave facet that faces medially and backwards. The posterior border, this is the posterior border of the superior articular facet. It is marked by a rough elevation. As you can see, there is a rough elevation on the posterior surface of the superior articular process. This is the mammillary process. These elevations, they are the mammillary process. The inferior articular processes, these are the inferior articular processes. They lie nearer to each other than the superior articular processes. And each process, it bears a convex facet that faces laterally and backwards. This was a typical lumbar vertebra.